Hey everyone, it's Apollo Tech here. I hope you're all doing well. Today's video is on the GameSet Xbox Collide, the 1000Hz option. How does it work and does it actually work on Xbox? Let's find out. So right now the controller is in 1000Hz profile and I'm going to do an X input test and you will see uh, the result. So over 1200Hz is showing and um, less than one millisecond, um, you know, average response time. Uh, that's um, uh, okay. So this is without any script uh, and it actually works on Windows 10, so this is Windows 10. I do have another app which I want to show you guys the result of as well. So here, if I move the stick, the update per second that went to 1861 basically changes by how many times the stick values change. So we have two values that are changing at the same time, so it's half of that. So definitely over 900 um, sort of um, uh, inputs are being sent. Uh, so definitely doing a thousand hertz uh, without any script or anything on the PC, but this is not the same 1000 Hertz as the G7 SE. Let's take a look. Right now I have the 1000 Hertz activated and the Xbox Accessories app is not going to recognize the controller. Also, I am not going to get any options for the headset, uh, this controller basically as an audio device uh, in my uh, audio settings, even though I have a headset connected. And uh, not just this, even if I open the Games and Nexus app, you'll see a different behavior. So I've just opened the Nexus app, you will see the light change and it will disconnect and it will reconnect um, as if it sort of enables itself to be recognized by the app. This only happens when you turn on the app and uh, you will see that I have the 1000 Hertz enabled. Now when I disable this 1000 Hertz, so I go to 250 Hertz and if I come back out uh, before I, I actually go, now we no longer have the options to have a different uh, Hertz for different profiles. So, the report rate is going to be for the whole controller itself. It's not like you can do per profile like we could do in G7 SE. But let's say I've put it to 250 hertz. If I come out of the app, if I do anything, the controller is going to change the light color. It will disconnect and reconnect as if it's going to enable that Xbox license. And uh, not only we're going to see the Xbox accessories app uh, show the controller now, we also have the option uh, for the Xbox controller um, uh, here, so we can actually get the audio out of the, he the headset. So in 1000 hertz, the Xbox, um, uh, the audio jack definitely gets disabled. Also, it looks like the Xbox license gets disabled. Uh, so it's not like the G7 SE where I think with the script, because G7 SE only does 500 hertz, uh, even in the 1000 hertz, it only returns around 500 hertz but it doesn't lose the Xbox license. You can enable 1000 Hertz and you still have uh, the Xbox Accessories app recognizing G7 SE. So this had me thinking, um, because the audio works on Xbox, do, are we actually getting any benefit of using the 1000 Hertz on the controller and using it on Xbox? Let's take a look at the results. So you guys know how I'm doing these tests. I'm recording at 240 frames and basically the moment the stick is moving and then how long it's taking for the screen to show the register. So I did the flick test, like, you know, Art is Wars video. I also did another test and uh, that's actually very promising. Um, so uh, the idea is it's a motorized solution that will move at a constant speed every time. And then we get to see what's going on um, with different controllers. And uh, it's actually, um, I'm surprised how repeatable that is. I'm going to refine this a little bit more. It's like the first time I've, I've done it. But I have some idea just to show you guys um, if I put them side by side, you will see how uh, sort of equal uh, the test is. So I'm going to show you guys results of the motorized solution and then I'll show the results of the flick test as well. So looking at the results of the motorized test, the G7 SE with 1000 Hertz, I only did 10 tests um, because this is the first time I was doing it. And uh, so we got 12.3 frames on average. Uh, the frames are going to look higher on this one because the motor solution is a lot slower than what you can push by hand or uh, or if you flick it, that's a lot more movement. But if it's it's the same exact movement on both of the controllers. So 12.3 on G7 SE, 13.7 on uh, the Collide in 1000. It was 1000 Hertz on PC, but I could get audio on Xbox. So I had a feeling that the 1000 Hertz does not work on, on Xbox. So this test result actually showed the Collide being slower than the G7 SE. Let's take a look at the flick test results now. So when we come to the uh, flick results, uh, so uh, we I did the G7 SE in 250 hertz, Collide in 250 hertz, G7 SE in 1000 hertz, and Collide in 1000 hertz. And if you see here, G7 SE 250 hertz, 8.28 is the average, and you can see 
there was like one seven frame and then an eight and nine frames. And when we look at the Collide um, in 250 hertz, again, we have one seven frame. So you can see how many eight frames, nine frames, and we did get some 10 frames. And uh, at first I thought that um, it could be because the springs are much tighter at the moment. And the funny thing was G7SE, I needed two dead zones. Uh, to get rid of the uh, drift, sometimes even three, depending on that, but two to three dead zone in X Defiant uh, for the G7SE, and Collide was on one. So, because uh, if I just put one, then I could get rid of the drift completely because a new controller. So, lower dead zones, but a higher result. G7SE, when we enable 1000 hertz, we lose audio and everything, and you can see it clearly shows an improvement 7.52. Uh, out of the you know the average of 25 uh, test results, collide. If I look at the thousand hertz, yeah, it will look like that we have less 10 frame results. But if you look at the average, it's actually worse than what it was in 250. So I think that's just like you know the variance in test setup and stuff. Um, but it did not improve at all. So that tells me that the thousand hertz is probably not working uh, on Xbox. Uh, it's because, uh, like I showed, the, the audio gets disabled, and it looks like the Xbox license get disabled as well when we enable the thousand hertz. And when I saw the results, it sort of confirmed to me that it might be the case. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. The controller performs extremely well. I've been having so much fun in X Defiant. I've actually been using just this controller on Xbox, and uh, it's. Uh, I have to say, the experience is absolutely amazing. Uh, I can keep the dead zones to zero or one because a new controller, the sticks are pretty firm right now. And uh, yeah, it performs really, really well. Another thing is I haven't tried the 500 hertz because if I keep the 500 hertz, uh, it, Xbox Accessories app can actually still recognize the controller. So that's something that I will test for uh, when I do a video for uh, the Collide versus the G7SE. That's the next thing that I'm working on. Also, I will be testing the controller on PC. Uh, and I will see how the 1000 Hertz uh, stands up against the G7SE. Uh, and I will, because uh, I can do uh, the uh, X Defiant test, the practice range on a GTX 1650 laptop. So if there are differences, we'll get to see that on the PC as well. But for now, I, I am actually uh, enjoying the controller. But when it comes to the 1000 Hertz, I have to say the G7SE definitely has this one beat on Xbox. And uh, one thing I uh, would like to ask you guys if anybody has the Flux variant, can they confirm in the comment section? If they see the same behavior on the PC, if they enable the 1000 Hertz, can the Xbox Accessories app uh, recognize the controller? Also, um, what happens to the audio? Uh, but I'm very keen to find out if the Xbox Accessories app can see the controller and if they have that disconnect. So when they are in the 1000 Hertz and they come out of the Nexus app, does the controller disconnect and reconnect? Because I have a feeling it might be that the Flux is working like the G7SE and actually might be a better option for somebody who's on the Xbox. Until somebody confirms that for me, I don't want to spend the money because I'm thinking, should I need to get another G7SE or should I pick up the Flux? But yeah, um, uh, those are my findings. Like I said, I'm having a lot of fun with the controller and I'm going to be doing a lot more tests uh, for its video uh, when it's compared to the G7SE. Uh, but please share your thoughts. What are you guys thinking? How your experience been uh, with the Collide on Xbox and on PC? Uh, really keen to find out what you guys feel and uh, how it's performing for you. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot to everyone who subscribed. Your support means a lot. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hopefully, I'll catch you in one of my other videos. Bye for now.